Hello everyone and welcome to my new video. What is this video about? Well, it's time to explore Granulator 3 because uh, if I'm honest, I'm, I'm bored now of everyone asking me if I've tried it and if I'm going to do a video. Here is the video. I have never used Granulator 3. I think I've used Granulator 2 maybe a couple of times uh, and I don't really remember Granulator 1. It's probably too far in the past. Um, but Granulator 3 is coming with Live 12. So here I am in the Live 12 beta, the current version, the most up-to-date version I could get. I think it's 12.0.23 or something. I don't know. Um, and I've got the Push 3, uh, and I'm going to look at Granulator 3. So two threes in one in one. Um, so, uh, Granulator 3 is the latest evolution of Robert Hank's legendary granular sampler, built with a strong focus on modulation and expression. How exciting. A few highlights, three different playback modes, mm. real-time audio capture, that's exciting. Um, a large collection of combo filters, no idea what that means. Never heard of a combo filter. It's put in sort of speech marks, so maybe that's... Sort of, anyway, a stereo LFO. How interesting. And MPE support and MPE legato in mono mode. Right, I have never used this before. Let's put... Oh, okay, we need to drop this down. Okay, let's pull this in and have a look at it. So remember, people, I am running the Live 12 beta. There may be a few little bumps and scrapes, but that's fine. So, well, it looks nice, doesn't it? I thought, um, because I did the uh, the 90s banger thing yesterday, I thought I'd use this wah sample because <laughs> um, it got people um, chatting about it in the uh, in the uh, comments. Um, hmm, interesting how the faders are a little bit orangey around zero. It's interesting. Okay, let's just put a limiter on my master just to be on the safe side. So yeah, this is, I'm um, just gonna jam, gonna explore. No idea how this thing works, never tried it. But I know a little bit about granular synthesis, so I think I could probably uh, find my way around. All right. All right, so already we've got our position here. This is a very short sample, which is good, I think, for granular synthesis. <laughs> I'm sure we all know what granular synthesis is, but if you don't, I will give you a, the best brief explanation I can. Basically, you can take a sample and um, kind of focus in on it on like on a minuscule kind of atomic level and um, turn it into a sort of texture and move around it. It kind of um, turns like sound into sort of Play-Doh or like a, if you imagine like a big long uh, like line of beads and each of those beads on that string is a grain and if you stretch the uh the the beads out they can sort of separate in distance uh, you, basically you can slow stuff down <laughs> so we've got our position here um classic loop and cloud oh that's interesting so we've got our position this is sort of where we're going to be in the sample We've got our grain size, which is probably going to shrink that down. Yeah, okay. And it's in milliseconds. That's interesting. Ooh. Robot. Shape. What does shape do? Ah, ooh, look at that little visualization there. That's very, Oh, you can do it there, can you? Oh, that's nice. I wonder how they did that. So if you turn that, it turns that as well. Gosh, this is... Right, scan. Ah, okay, so it starts scanning from the playback position, goes to the end, wraps back around and comes back to the start or the position. Okay, that sounds grainy. What does this slide do? Oh. Okay. 
So what is the shape? Let's have a look at the information. Has this all been explained? Oh, no. Okay, there's no information on the uh, instrument itself. That's fine. So I'm wondering if this is, if the shape is perhaps how much this shape is being applied. So I would guess that this is, let's just check that it's actually, no, there is no explanation. We're going to have to guess. Let's guess together. So classic, I would su suggest that's like a Hanning window, uh, like the positive loop. So that's kind of like a trape trapezoid and cloud. Okay, so these are all different types of like amplitude windows for each of the grains. Classic is kind of this. It's. I'm sorry if you're watching on YouTube, you've got to look right at the very bottom left-hand corner, but... Anyway, it's just the way it is. So it's different ways in which the grains are am amplified. Um, sometimes call it a window, an amplitude window or something. So loop, um, oh well, classic is kind of like got this nice curve. Loop is a little bit more aggressive. And then cloud is probably multiple. Ah, see the shape disappears when I choose cloud. So yeah, cloud is kind of very much your sort of... So why is it when you change the grain size down and the... S wow. Ah. <laughs> oh my goodness me. Is that aftertouch? Okay, so I've got my push three plugged in, switched on, and we all know that's got MPE, so... So I think that's pressure or aftertouch, maybe. But not on that one. Okay, so is that doing this? Ah, that's the... S up and down slide. Okay, so as I move my finger up and down the pad. Ah, so the slide, so this slide is the slide from the MPE controller, which is currently being routed to the grain size. So with a positive slide, with my finger at the, I should have plugged the camera in, I'm sorry, everyone. Um, with my finger at the bottom of one pad on push, that means the grain size is very high or short, I should say, really. And then as I slide it up, it increases the grain size. And if we go in the negative direction, then it's, as I slide up, the grain size gets smaller. Robot hysteria. Okay. Um, so the slide is MPE slide. Okay, that's nice. Ah, so there's slide for the position. Ah, this is interesting. So let's put the position all the way down to zero and apply 100% slide to the position. Okay, you can't see, but I am sliding my finger up and down on one of the pads on the push three. And I'm moving the start position. That's pretty cool. But it only... Um, I don't know if it's a bug, but it seems... It's not working on all the pads. Could be a bug. So probably that will get captured via MIDI. Let's just record a little bit of that and look at the automation. Ah, we can have them both in the same window now. There we go. Lovely stuff. So show me the MPE. Show it to me. Where would that be? There is the MPE. Okay, so. Yeah, look at that. That's exciting. So if I maybe just ditched all of that and drew like a line like this. What's this stuff down here? Oh, that's pressure. Okay. So let's go back to the grain size. So I think when you click one of these dials here, this sort of tab along the top 
reveals routing options to modulate stuff to that currently selected dial. This little arrow down here would give me that impression. So slide, okay, so slide is this top one. Am I right? Slide, yeah, and then this one is pressure. So let's apply some pressure modulation to the grain size, which we've already just recorded by accident. Let's see what happens. Oh, I didn't actually do it. Okay, let's do it now. <laughs> okay. Huh. All right. Okay. Okay, let's just draw a um let's just draw a line. Oh, pen, come on. Oh, bug. But oh, why can't I draw use the pen hit? Oh my god. <laughs> what have I done? It's me. Right. Okay. Do I need to click here? All right. Here we go. All right. Sorry. I'm still a bit new to Live 12. Madness. Okay. All right. So the top MPE lane has uh, got the slide applied to the position and the bottom MPE lane has got the pressure assigned, assigned to the grain size. Okay. We're learning things. So what is this? Let's just turn that clip off for a second. What's this variation? Okay, I actually just kind of want to disable all of that um, MPE stuff for now. Let's turn this all down. So variation. Wow. Ah, so I think that might be like a little bit of jitter applied to the position. So let's move the position to something like... Gosh, that's really noisy. Ah, position one millisecond. Great. Bloody hell. What's this? Is that assigning any of... Um, am I even doing anything? <laughs> uh, TR, transposition perhaps? Not hearing much though. Is it only when I use the press? No, okay, maybe not. Um, not sure what's going on here. I mean, I would suggest that this variation, this is how much of variation is applied in milliseconds to the position. Yeah, that's very gran granular. Oh my God, I've gone to a completely different page. Okay, take me back. Take me back to this. Mm, okay. Ah, okay. Yeah, now we're hearing something. Yeah, so that's applying transposition to the grains. I'm guessing according to the grain size. So if I increase the grain size, there we go. This is basically how you make alien alien sound effects. Because they're like having a conversation, or it's the Houses of Parliament. <laughs> I made a topical joke on my YouTube. Do you like it? Yeah. Right. Okay. So we've got variation on the transposition. The grain size then maybe, I guess that's variation on the grain size. So if I pull the grain size right down. Yep. So that's applying variation to the grain size if we have a slightly larger grain size. Oh, it's slightly frustrating having to tab back and forth, but... Mustn't grumble. Okay, so this variation allows us to apply random um, kind of noise clusters to each of these very well, not the scan, but I would guess the position and the grain size and the transposition. Okay, let's turn that down. Let's reorientate ourselves. Let's reset all of this stuff. Ah. 
So transposition. Obviously, we'll transpose this up and down. So I'm still in the cloud uh, amplitude window. Okay, uh, spread. Wow. So that's stereo spread, but also in semitones. And it does it whilst the note is pressed. That's nice. Then we've got some LFOs. Right. So where do we... Okay, so this is the LFO, is it? Use mod well. I might do. Um, frequency. So LFO frequency. So... Okay, well, that looks like the LFO there. What's that? Oh, that's the... Auto. Okay, what's this? Ah, so that's... So, okay, waveform modulation. Okay, so where do you assign the LFO to then? Um, I can't really work it out. Pressure slide, envelope amount, frequency. Ah, is that what is is the LFO was what's creating the the variation? Let's change some of these LFOs. Let's go to um, let's try up. I can't really tell. <laughs> I'm a little confused. So let's, okay, we're back on the variation. Ah, LFO. All right. <laughs> Sorry, this is a terrible demonstration. No. Well, that's a filter. Huh? Okay, I'm a little bit confused by the LFO. Um, sorry about that. I'm, I'm not a, a flaw in its design. And maybe it's just because it's early in the morning and I, um, I'm i doing this unprepared. But I thought on this occasion, rather than sort of spend the time and then come in with a really slick, like slick... Vi My videos aren't slick. I think we've worked that out right now, haven't we? After 13 years of this channel, I think everyone's worked out that I don't do slick edited videos. I just sit here and prattle on like a, a complete balloon. Okay, so what about the envelopes then? Is there like some sort of window I'm missing maybe or can't see anything else but slightly confused over this modulation section. Ah. Oh, so that's the amplitude envelope. Right. Ah, that sounds like it's doing something. No, just a little bit confused by this. Um, there's nothing here to imply that it, you kind of assign it to something. So I'm thinking that maybe it's kind of already assigned to something. I just don't know what that is. So when I click on the very, ah, ah, okay, right. I think I got it. So the position, right. So when you're on the position dial, the tab along here reveals modulation sources. So we've already done slide and press. So here is, there it is. All right, we've got it. Let's go back. So now the LFO is assigned to the position. Okay, I got it now. There we go. Okay, so let's go back to the LFO. Uh, no, click this one. Yeah, okay. 
So now let's try random then. Okay, so there we go. So that random LFO is now assigned to the start position. This is good. Let's try assigning it to the grain size in the negative direction. That's like a very, very, very small um, a drone m made out of Meccano um, whizzing past. Some of you might not know what Meccano is. I think you might actually even have to be a certain age. No, they still make Meccano, don't they? It's like Lego, but it's made of metal. You build stuff with it. It was big in the 60s. I don't know why I'm talking. You don't, you don't want to know about Meccano. Right. All right, so we've worked out how to get our modulation sources to our destinations, uh, which took me a little while, but uh, I've been going 20 minutes. That's all right. Okay. So we can apply um, LFO to the modulation. Uh, sorry, the variation. So I'm going to I'm going to reset the LFO on the um, grain size and the position, and then go to the variation and then assign some LFO to the variation. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's interesting. So, I'm not really hearing a huge amount, but it's very... Let's increase the grain size, maybe. remember that I'm actually on a video and I mustn't zone out. <laughs> okay, so my guess would be is that the LFO, you can choose how much variation is applied via the LFO, but I, I don't seem to be getting much of a result from that right now. Perhaps I'm doing it wrong. So you can even route the envelope. You, so we've got envelope two. Okay, so envelope one is clearly just, oh, it says there, volume. And envelope two is kind of a, um, uh, an, a an available source. And it looks like that you can route um, LFO two, sorry, envelope two to the LFO amount and indeed probably everything else on the LFO. And so on the envelope, you can't route anything to that. But why would you, why would you route anything to an envelope unless you wanted to modulate the time? but I think that's a little bit too much. All right, so let's... Oh, and we've got some filters. Yeah, combo filters. Ah, okay. Low pass and high pass. How does that work then? Why is the, the width in ST? Semitones? Oh, it's stereo. Yeah, stereo. Okay. That's a tiny little bit misleading because some of these, um, you know, um, some of these new updated MIDI things have got, um, you know, the scale awareness thing where they've put stuff in ST for semitones or scale. No, not scale degrees. That's that's when it's switched off. Oh, I don't know. It's been a while since I've had a look. But so the, yeah, because it says here stereo LFO, but then that's, this is the filter. Oh, I don't know. Oh, that's, that's aggressive. My God, the resonance goes up to seven. That's, that's unusual. So this is a low pass and high pass together. When you sweep all the way down, that's a low pass. When you sweep up, you get a high pass. That's pretty cool. Um, low pass and notch. Just turn that variation down. Gosh, it's a... Granted, you can sometimes just create absolute mush. Okay. 
Yeah. That's a low pass and a notch filter. Notch plus notch. What? I do like a notch filter. High pass and notch. So all the way up is high pass. Sweeping down into a notch. Can't really hear it. Oh, there it is. Yeah. So the notch is there. And we sweep up into a high pass. Pretty cool. High pass. All right. Um, voices. What's hold? Ah. Oh, I could have. <laughs> I could have not been pressing a key the whole time. So hold will hold the note. That's very good. And then what's this? Mono one. Ah, oh, that's portamento, I bet. Yeah, that's portamento. So I'm. Or glide, I should say glide, really. All right. Okay. So what are these things? Plus. Oh, that's the zoom in and out. What's this? Oh, my goodness me. <laughs> All right. A little explanation. Thank you very much. Take me back to live, please. Oh, I've just opened live 11 by mistake. This is painfully embarrassing. Right. Um, oh, and now Push is very upset. <laughs> okay, let's go back to uh, 12. Ugh. All right, let's keep going. So let's try the... Okay, I've, I've crapped out Push. Um... I'll just shut it down and turn it back on. Right, so let's have a look at the real-time recording. Where would one do that then? Uh, perhaps I might actually need to read the thing. Real-time audio capture. I, is that part... Ah, this button here. Here we go. So this button has now enabled the real-time audio. So I don't know if my mic is set up to do this. Let's have a look. Um... Oh, they've changed it all, ins and outs. Right, okay, so if I turn that on, then we're going to have a little bit of feedback because I'm monitoring everything at the same time. So let's choose... I sound like a robot, but I sound like an old-fashioned robot from, like, the 80s when they, they didn't know how to make robot sounds, so they just put a very short delay on it. Milk added to shopping list. Okay, um, so let's choose... Well, actually, let me give it a name mic check and go back to granulator and then it should appear mic check and oh look it's got a little meter there length two seconds four seconds eight seconds interesting post mix oh i'd love to get into building this sort of stuff i'd love to make effects with all this options in i must learn i must learn right so let's just hit capture and say what what's happening what's happened let me turn the keyboard on it's recorded like eight seconds. That was a bit too long. Let's try two seconds. Hello, 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 hello. So I would think that maybe... Let's turn that off now. I would think that maybe there was like a buffer rolling in the background and then when you hit capture, it sort of stops. Like a cer I think they call it circular buffers. Where it's just... kind of rolling in the background. And um, then when you hit capture, it stops. Uh. Demonic. This is upsetting. <laughs> okay, so I can turn this from the push. This is very nicely laid out on the push. Oh, satisfying. Let's try two seconds. Snake 
Okay. So I think maybe that the end, uh, the LFOs are perhaps bipolar. So I'll set the position to 50 seconds, uh, not 50 seconds, 50%. Um, and then set the LFO to maybe 50%. And then we might get a perfect sweep up and down in both directions from the center. Okay, not quite. Ah, as I remember, it's because the um, because I had it on random, didn't I? So let's put it back to a perfect sign. Okay, let's let's apply. Where am I positioned? Let's set the LFO to a hundred percent then. Okay, I'm trying to get like a perfect sign to here, forwards and backwards. Two Let's set the LFO amount to 50%. See what we get. <laughs> there we go. So if you want to get dead center with your LFOs, I think it's a good idea to just set everything to 50% and then start from there because LFOs can get a bit confusing. When I started understanding how modulation worked, it took me a very long time to sort of understand that you, you need to have like a center position and then how much you're applying modulation in either direction. I, I just kind of thought that it was above um, the, the the current position. That was a bit too long. Let's try two seconds. Maybe that might be a good video two for Hello. the future, well, understanding how modulation works. So this is what goes on in my head when I'm having a particularly anxious episode. Right, let's... So again, going back to the shape, I'm wondering if that's kind of, um, this is very difficult to illustrate with a mouse, but like imagine that the perhaps the shape is actually affecting maybe making the curvature of the amplitude window more sharp or more rounded. You can hear how it gets more clicky. In both directions, around 50, around 50. So the default is 50, which would, would make me think that that's a perfect sort of round window. Actually, just to put hold on. There we go. Uh, There we go. There's the stereo LFO. So what does that look like? This is fuck. This is fucking my it. <laughs> this is very weird. <laughs> Am I on drugs? No, I've only had tea and toast today. I hope you can hear this. Listen in headphones, viewers. Let's, a Let's apply some LFO to the grain size. Let's go minus 50. Weird. <laughs> Maybe I could try and um, uh, sample something a little bit more musical. I could like go, ah. Oh. That's really great. I love that. Ah, okay. Um, this is absolutely a step in the right direction. I need to understand how this works because it would be brilliant to 
if like oh my god imagine just being able to sample directly into sampler or simpler with this kind of tech ableton you've got to make it happen it would just i just clicked a button and the sound was there it's just brilliant um i can't begin to imagine all the sorts of things that i'd like to try and make like having a little kind of i don't know like a kind of midi controlled looper that you can sample into from like another channel or select which channel you want dynamically and then hit a button the samples in there it's trigger midi keys and it's mangling it anyway that's for another time but well done well done robert henk henker whatever your name is you've done a brilliant thing Uh, let's go back to the LFO here. What's move? There's this LFO shape called move. I mean, to me, this sounds like, um, uh, pre prequel era Star Wars ships taking off. <laughs> Not that that's a bad thing. It's kind of a Doppler, it's sort of creating that stereo LFO is almost creating like a Doppler effect in my ears. But not, I don't know. It's very interesting. So move, what's the difference between move and random? <laughs> what have I done? Lovely. We could probably do um, 10 cc's I'm not in love. If I could remember the... I um, can't remember the chords. I think it's something like... Um, something like... Make that a bit louder. Oh, then where does it go after that? It's C sharp. Oh, I can't remember. And then I think I think it's something like. Oh no no no! It's B. It's B. It's A. Okay, I got it. Oh shit. <laughs> I can't play keyboards. This is awful. It doesn't sound like 10cc, I'm afraid. If you don't know how they did that, go and go and uh, look it up. Actually, I think Robert Henke did a uh, little talk about 10cc and how they did that cloudy uh i won't tell you go look it up it's it's brilliant in the 70s in 1973 they did that with a load of load of tracks on a tape machine and a mixer uh where was i oh no right or is it the june soundtrack <laughs> but that would be like this This sounds pretty good. Oh my God, the envelope is... That's a very slow envelope. Thirty-five seconds on the attack time. Wow, these are long envelopes. Sixty seconds? On the attack time. Oh, little glitch there. 
That's pretty impressive. I didn't know you could get a... Do any of the other... The other instruments don't have 60 seconds of attack time, do they? Or I only just discovered this. Well, I knew that had 20 seconds. Maybe I've just never done anything that slow. <laughs> it's always been there. I'm just being an idiot. Right, so let's try... I want to do try and do 10cc again. Let's see. Wow. Okay, let's say 1,000. Oh, God, I can't remember. Can't remember the chord after that, but then I think it's something like... Oh, I don't know. Maybe one day I'll try and recreate 10 cc's I'm not in love in Ableton. <laughs> and um, and then everyone who watched the 90s banger video will be like, mate, what are you doing? What? <laughs> everyone will be confused. All right. So how long have I been going? 40 minutes. That's way too long. Right. So there we go. That was a pretty satisfying first try with Granulator 3 by Robert Henker from Ableton. And... Um, it's uh, it's pretty cool. I, I love this like real-time sampling. I seem to remember that the other one had a similar thing, but you needed to run a separate device on the channel and then they would kind of talk to each other over a network. This is kind of all very nicely baked in. Actually, before I go, let's just have a quick look inside. Let's have a look at what's going on and we'll get some unlock shock. Ah, I can't. Oh, here we go. Here it is, right. It's frozen. Okay. Mm, I maybe let, okay. Unlock shock. Oh, it's actually very, very neat. Um, let's zoom in a little bit. So there's probably a lot of stuff going on here. File handling. Uh, let's have a look. Um, info tilde. What's that? Oh, that's for the, but is that the buffer? Yeah. So that's going to report this, the length, I suppose. Name length. Oh, prepend name. Okay. Interesting. All right. No, so, okay. <laughs> Um, mode, mono mode switching, voice allocation and stuff, I would say. DSP with external. Okay, let's have a look at this. Is this where it gets the routing? I'd really love to know how you can route the audio between devices like that. What's this? Ah, this is a poly. I can't get in. I can't get in there. Is that an external? Maybe that's an external, custom external. I can't look at. That's fine. Um, ah, capture DSP. Let's have a look at this. So, ah, oh, some gen. There's a gen patch. Can we look at the gen patch? Woo! Oh, it's all in code box. Is that code box? I'm not, I'm not really good with code, I'm afraid. I'm sure lots of people out there are watching is thinking, why not, mate? We learn it in school. Yes, it is code box. Um, poke. Um, start playing segments. Well, I would I would make the assumption that this is the part of the patch that's um, for capturing the um, audio from other places in the set. But I I would still be well. I would still be interested to know how you... Goodness, look at these messages. How how can someone use so many message boxes? I was told, don't use message boxes. They, they're a drain on resources. Maybe, maybe that's not the case. Um, what's in here? Funnel? What the hell's funnel? Never heard of that. Uh, well, I mean, very, very... Ah. So where's the actual engine? Uh, is there like an actual engine? Uh, perhaps not. Real-time grain visualizer. Let's have another, another look at this. Position. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't know most... Oh, there's some stuff down here. So. Um, okay. Yeah. Pretty interesting stuff. Okay, let's. We don't need to see any more of that. Uh, you can explore that in your own time. Granulator three. Well done, well done, everyone who made this. 
Um, it's very, very good. All right. I think that's it for this one. See you next time. Enjoy. Bye.